MJ Hobby Corner here. Welcome to uh, this little presentation. And uh, what I want to show is the some of the painting uh, process, some of the steps uh, that I used to paint this uh, mech that I built, the scratch belt. So here is a picture of the mech as it stood yesterday. I added some bits of tin can. Uh, this is just material that I cut very carefully from a tin can and I added to the mech as some extra detail. Here is another picture that shows uh, some of the tin bits that I used. I also use uh, uh, broken up cable ties. I cut them up and they make excellent little vents. And I also raid my little uh, electronics box and pick out some uh, bits and pieces from electronic hardware and just stick it in there. So the mech is pretty much ready for paint. You can also see the Titanicus bits that I added there. And uh, this mech does have motion. The guns do move. So uh, let's go on to the base coat of the mech. And that's what I'm going to talk about next. So I add this uh, base coat of brown. Uh, this is a color that I use. Uh, I buy this at the dollar store. It's cheap paint. And frankly, it works well for me. I've been using it for a long time now. Um, so I give the mech a spray coat of this. Then I take out my airbrush and I begin to give it a coat of tan. This is what's called a uh, territorial beige from Applecraft uh, paints. I don't use anything else. I mean, this paint is good enough for this kind of build. And I give it a nice airbrush uh, of this uh, darker tan. And uh, notice that I also leave some of the brown st uh, standing out in some areas. Okay, I really like the effect that it gives. So, uh, you know, that's what I do. Now, I'm not a professional painter at all. And one reason that I don't have painting videos on my channel, I just, you know, I, I just, I'm not great at it. But I have learned a, a good deal about airbrushing. So, there you go. So now uh, I add a little bit of green paint and I'm beginning to do the patterns of green. Uh, you can see I'm testing the airbrush there. I always do that. It's a nice habit to do when you're working with airbrush. And just give it a, a, a pattern of green. And keep in mind that you can use templates. Some people use templates uh, to get their camouflage patterns. You can also use uh, tape. Uh, what is that masking tape and it works very well because it doesn't like you know it has it's built for that kind of stuff you cut out some shapes out of the masking tape and very gently put it on your uh, area and you're gonna paint and that gives you kind of a template right to work from but I'm doing everything uh, by eye I'm just gonna give this a very basic kind of camel pattern and so now I'm using a forest green which is a brighter green And now I'm going to add some light tan with the airbrush. And this is uh, kind of like a highlight stage. Okay, and here you see I'm, I'm about to blend the paint with, uh, you know, my blender. Um, and just give it a nice quick blend so that the paint is nice and even. I'm, I'm diluting it with water. And uh, so it, there you go. There's the paint. Then put it in my airbrush, test it out, make sure that the airbrush is not skipping, not dirty. Keep in mind that I'm doing uh, airbrush washing after each coat. That's very important to say as well. I wash the airbrush, you know, and make sure that it doesn't spatter or skip. And, um, and that's it. So now I'm kind of doing the tan highlights and that's what you see here. It's like a brighter tan. And uh, if I go a little bit overboard with this, I go back and just give it another little bit of darker tan. So basically, uh, now I have three colors. And pretty soon I'm going to add a fourth color. So now it's adding the burnt umber pattern. And that's the darker color that I'm using. And you see it here. I'm beginning to uh, spray it onto the mech. And all it is is burnt umber from uh, Apple Barrel Paints. And I just squirt this on very carefully. Uh, usually I start at a distance and then I get in closer if I need a little bit closer detail. 
but basically uh, it takes a lot of patience and just very very slowly painting so that I get some of that burnt umber into the mix and again I'm doing a very random pattern and that's what you guys are seeing here so keep uh, brushing with the burnt umber until I'm happy with the piece and uh, I usually uh, do this like twice I have to wash my airbrush after one um, you know a session and then uh, you know go at it again and kind of hit the areas that I already hit with the paint and do it over to just to make sure that I got enough of the paint on there right as this dries it becomes more and more subtle the paint you know and that's why I like these paints for this kind of thing so uh, there again I'm just mixing a little more burnt umber so that I can continue with the burnt umber and I'm going to continue to add to the burnt umber uh, patches and this mech is going to come out a little bit darker than the tank the super tank that I, I painted earlier so uh, basically this part is the touch ups and I'm going to go back with the different colors and just touch up the areas that I missed this is still uh, sort of that dark brown um, and I'm kind of going back and touching up the blotches but I will go back with a little bit of the green a little bit of the darker tan just to make sure that I haven't overdone it in any of the layers you know that keeps a nice kind of even uh, pattern right and as I said um, as this dries it becomes a little bit more uh, a little bit duller and I like that I like that for this kind of effect but we're going to do something else. There's another step that I'm going to add. Uh, it's the pre-weathering step. Actually, this is preliminary brush work. So I go back and some of my uh, camel blotches, I go back and with watered down paint, I kind of highlight the edges of the patterns. That seems to help a lot. So I do a little bit of brush work in between my airbrush sessions, you know. And again, keep in mind that there are tons of techniques out there to do this stuff. You gotta shop around, you know. I'm using techniques that I learned from Scale Modeler, a magazine that I was a, a part of, you know, a long time ago. And this is the preliminary weathering. Now what I do is I take the dirty water from my paint. Yes, it so happens that it has gray in it and brown and green. So I take that dirty water, fill my airbrush with a little bit of it, add a little bit of black ink and this is India ink that I have uh, just a drop of black ink and then spray this all over the model to give it a little bit of a grime kind of a, a basic grime coat now you have to do this it's very subtle and you have to do this in a way that it doesn't pull you don't want it to pull you just want to give it a very basic wash with this and I wash the entire model and uh, as you'll see later it, it'll get darker um, over the model and it gives it a really cool effect it's like a really grimy kind of pattern and I love that so for models that are not like you know wrecks or anything like that when I do a wreck I might want to do like a more uh, a harsher kind of rust effect on the metal and there's a lot of techniques for that but this is just the basic weathering right it's just the effects of rain and and battle and all that stuff grime right so give it this wash and then let it dry thoroughly and again it's a very subtle thing but you could already see in areas where it has pulled like in some of the detail areas it does form uh you know it does bring those areas out so it's basically like a common ink wash but i'm using the dirty water from my paint bucket instead of ink so let this dry fully and you can see some shadowing already developing from that ink and that is now ready for the next step so i let this uh dry before doing anything else I just let this dry and here you can see uh, that some of that uh, 
water that I sprayed on and it's already drying, the dirty water. And I learned that technique from Scale Modeler magazine. I was a member of Scale Modeler for many years and uh, had a good collection of magazines. So I can't really wait to see how this looks with the uh, super tank, uh, together with the super tank and some of the Imperial Guard that I will be repainting. And uh, you can see how this camo pattern is darker than the tanks. So I may actually uh, do some weathering on the tank as well so that it'll match uh, this paint scheme. And here it is. Uh, you know, you can use these kinds of scratch builds and dioramas too. There's no reason not to. So uh, thank you guys for watching and more mech builds coming soon.